So I'll start my talk with uh, one of the most fundamental questions um, some of the most curious human minds have been asking for thousands of years. How does this great diversity of life forms that we see on this planet comes about? And of course, the scientific way of answering this is evolution. So in evolution, basically, we, we have a variation in phenotypes of any population of any species. And then there is natural selection acting on this uh, variation in phenotypes. But through this natural selection, only the fit individuals are selected. Now, most of this variation in phenotype comes from the variation that is existent in the genes of those, uh, all those uh, uh, individuals in the population. Now, but then there is something else. There is another phenomena where you can have the same set of genes, the same genotype, but there could be still completely different phenotypes, as you can see in this uh, image. So here, uh, each pair of animals are basically the same species. So they are either genetically identical or very close to each other. But as you can see in this, uh, all these images, uh, they look uh, quite different from each other. So there is huge uh, phenotypic difference. Now, f this phenomena is called uh, phenotypic plasticity. So it's when the same genotype can produce vastly different phenotype in response to some environmental cues. Now, this would be a uh, human example of a phenotypic plasticity when, where this gentleman can have a very different uh, phenotype in terms of how he appears and behaves while still maintaining the same genotype. Now, what I work on is this interesting uh, worm called uh, Pristionca specificus. And this particular worm has two different uh, mouth morphologies. So this is, again, the same genotype, same set of genes, producing two different uh, mouth, mouth structures. The one in the left that you see uh, is uh, called stenostomatous mouthworm. It's a very small mouth, and it's involved in bacterial feeding by the nematode. The other one is the interesting one. It's uh, called Eurostomata. It's a large mouth, and it uh, has very complicated structure. What this can do is actually uh, worms having this mouth morph uh, can go and uh, kill other nematodes, which are present in the same habitat. And the video is working. Cool. So basically, this is uh, another nematode of different species. And this worm, having this uh, large mouth structure, goes and kills it. Now, this is something of very uh, ecological importance, as this provides this uh, worms of, worm of this species a competitive advantage over its uh, uh, competitor present, uh, which are uh, sharing the same uh, habitat with this uh, nematode. Now, my project is about understanding how this actually happens at the molecular scale. So, what, to understand that, we created a lot of mutants. And uh, our mutants, unfortunately, do not look uh, like these, but look more like these. And so one of the mutants that uh, we found has a very interesting uh, 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 set of phenotypes. So I forgot to mention, there is uh, something called uh, sexual dimorphism in this particular species, where males and hermaphrodites, again, have different set of, of uh, uh, phenotypes there. So males are mostly, males, for example, mostly has one mouth form, and the hermaphrodites have a totally different mouth form. In the mutant that we created, this uh, ratio is kind of reversed. So hermaphrodites have more of one mouth, which may, uh, wild type don't have. Now, we map this particular gene, uh, this particular mutation, to a gene present on X chromosome of this particular species. And what we found that there is a mutation in the predicted gene and it's in the intron, which is the non-coding part of the gene. So what I did is I thought there might be some transcription going on in the other strand of DNA. So I did uh, some experiment and found out that there are actually two transcripts coming from the second strand. And these two transcripts, interestingly, have very different uh, effect on the mouth morph. So when they are introduced into the, into the mutant, they produce totally different mouth morphology. And my current work is about understanding how these uh, different factors that I just uh, described here, these two antisense uh, RNAs, actually interact among each other, interact with each other, and produce and uh, manifest uh, ultimately to these different mouth morphologies that is there in this particular mode. So with this, I would like to thank you all.